Over the last half decade, there have been a number of new treatment approaches developed for psoriatic arthritis and spondylarthritis. This follows upon a surge of interest uh, in these diseases uh, that has occurred because of our increasing recognition of them in the population, as well as the great interest that has been uh, shown about them because of the way in which TNFs have really been able to um, revolutionize the treatment of the diseases. This has led to important research on new mechanisms, including the importance of the Th17 cell pathway uh, and both interleukin-23 and interleukin-17 uh, as potential targets for treatment. These drugs, uh, such as ustekinumab uh, for interleukin-12-23 inhibition, Aprimolast for phosphodiesterase 4 inhibition, secukinumab, and now ixacizumab for interleukin-17 inhibition have really uh, allowed us uh, to treat the full spectrum of disease, which we now recognize is involving many domains, including arthritis, enthesitis, dactylitis, spondylitis, as well as the skin disease of psoriasis, and the terrible back problems uh, of patients with ankylosing spondylitis and other forms of axial spondylarthritis. So in many ways, the challenges that, that remain are very much like the opportunities. That is, it's important that we continue having funding for basic research, translational research, and clinical research uh, to improve upon what we've got so far. And that means better understanding of the mechanisms of psoriatic arthritis and spondyloarthritis, a better understanding about how to best clinically measure uh, the diseases, uh, and finding new mechanisms for treatment. Because one of the things that we know is that current treatments, although highly effective, may lose their effectiveness over time. And so we need new therapies uh, for those that are losing effectiveness. This has been a great time for us as rheumatologists uh, with a bevy of new medications in, in addition uh, to what has become a real gold standard uh, treatment of, uh, uh, with TNF inhibitors.